name's Alex. Um, I'm 32, I live in Oxford. I'm a sister, I'm single, I'm <laughs> all of those wonderful phrases that kind of don't mean a huge amount. Um, I'm currently employed, but soon not going to be. And that's really exciting. <laughs> well, not paid employment, I'm going off to volunteer, which is very exciting. I don't know how to describe myself. I, I can tell you where I bought them. I, I, I bought them in a shop called Office, which is just a shoe shop. And they're in the sale. And I remember walking past going, there the shoes. Oh, you know, that moment where you kind of go, hello. And I was so excited that I remember walking around the shop kind of going, can I have the other one of the shoes, please? And then when she gave it to me, I hugged it. When we were teenagers, it was all about having the really big heels and the kind of like really statement shoes. I was like, now I'm like sophisticated now. And then I wanted something a bit classier. And these fitted the bill perfectly. The, the last time that I remember wearing them properly was um, when I was joining a very good friend of mine for her a birthday celebration so it was a group of people that I'd met when we worked in London I used to work at an events venue and we met working behind the bar and it, it was one of those experiences where you kind of go what it, what am I doing like this is the bizarrest job in the world but we bonded really heavily over 14 15 hour shifts of serving drunk people drinks you know <laughs> it was bizarre and I had this orange dress on blue tights and these brown shoes and the reason that I vividly remember them at this event was I walked in, it was a new dress and new tights, but the shoes were still the same. <laughs> and my friend Alice, she looked me up, she looked me down and she went, well, at least I like your shoes. <laughs> Home is Norfolk, um, on the east coast of England. So I lived in New Zealand for a while. Um, I lived over in New Zealand for a year. Actually, one of the things that I absolutely love um, in everyday life is the varied walks that you can take to get to work. I'm really fortunate that I live in a city that has lots of little passageways and roads that kind of come out in the middle of nowhere or on parks and different exits and entrances to the parks. And the thing that I love most about walking around Oxford is the fact that it's made of really beautiful stone. A lot of it, like this, the way that it's built and I, I walk with my hands, like not on my hands, but as I walk along, I, t I, t I touch things. I'm very breaking that rumor. I do touch things. So if there's a tree, you know, I tend to reach out for trees. If there's interesting um, fences, and run my hands along them. It's a really tactile city. There's lots of different things that feel really good. Actually, the stuff that I find really hard in in day to day life is it's those moments where I have to be still and where I'm on my own. I find those, and I, I really do not look forward to them either, often just before you fall asleep, you know, so there's, there's really quiet times where there isn't people around and there isn't, you know, you know you should put your phone down because it's daft o'clock at night and, you know, looking at Facebook isn't going to actually change the fact that you're in your room on your own. Um, yeah, it's, it, I, I, don't, I don't do well on my own, <laughs> it's not something I enjoy. So, if somebody tells me a story, if, especially if it's a difficult story, a challenge that they're facing, without wanting to sometimes, I find myself kind of, it's the, empath the empathising and, you know, I do, I do tend to almost, almost in a physical sense, kind of standing sort of alongside them and kind of imagining, kind of, well, what would I be thinking? And I was like, well, I don't know because I'm not in their situation, you know, so it's really, and then I get really sad about that actually often that I can't see what their world looks like. You need food, you need somewhere to sleep so it's safe and you need love. Absolutely, you know, fundamentally I think everybody needs those things. You need to be able to eat and there are people that I work with on a daily basis who don't eat, you know, they're kind of it's like, when did you last eat? And they're like, oh, two, three days ago. And that, that hurts so much because they're the same people that may have somewhere to sleep and we kind of go, yay, we've done it, society's fixed everything, you know, this person's got a house, but they haven't got anybody who gives a shit about them, there's no love that's involved in their world, you know, there's, there isn't anybody that's looking out for them, not really, and that, I find that really hard. My uh, passion for toilets, you know, I think everybody needs access to a toilet, I do, I think you, know, you need to have the ability to... to to look after your body, but not just what goes into it, but also what comes out of it in a really safe and, 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 and careful way. But there are 
guys that I work with who use wheelchairs who get changed on, have to get changed on the floor, taken out of their wheelchairs and put on the floor to have their sort of sanitary wear kind of changed and I find that really hard so I think that's a, for me that's something that people absolutely need to have access to is like somewhere safe to go to the toilet because it's just not okay. But love's a really big one. Love, love is definitely the big one. We need love. We need, and it's not love in the intimate way, it's love as in I care enough about you to kind of ask you how you are and mean it and accept that if you say I'm not okay that that might mean a longer conversation, that might mean a hug, that might mean doing something and stepping out of your comfort zone and suspending what you need to do to be with that person. I always look at our ability to move by what it would mean if I couldn't and I and I know that, on a sort of an emotional, sort of physical level, that really hurts. I've, yeah, I've, yeah, absolutely chosen to leave my leave my job and to remove all of the safety elements that I have with a full time paid paid job. You know, in a in the UK, you know, to move to Tanzania where I'm not going to be paid and I'm not going to be um, close to. Or pretty much anything that I understand. Running water, that's not going to be there. Electricity, that's not going to be there. And that's why I'm doing it. Because I'm, I, I, I need a, I need a different perspective. I support um, adults who have a learning disability to improve their lives every single day. And in the last th three years, I've been in Oxford. I've had two experiences of being homeless in this city. I've had. Um, numerous experiences of moving house because the costs are just enormous. So, if, you know, I, I, I just keep coming round to this kind of sense of, well, we're not getting it right. Something's going wrong here, and if 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 I'm constantly arguing through my work or through my through my own sort of personal life that to, to to improve things, then how how much longer can you do that? I don't know. I suppose I don't have the answers anymore. I've tapped out all of the possible answers from within so I've got to go find some from somewhere else and go into a completely different culture on the other side of the world may give me some options it may give me a different perspective it may just give me a, a disease that I don't know it may get malaria who knows this this is the unknown I think that's the thing is I need to step into the unknown everything that I do currently is quite safe yes okay homelessness isn't something that you particularly want I don't want to live in a tent again I don't want to be wrecked with the debt of renting in this city. I think my, my way of going through life is uh, have a plan, listen to what other people say, panic about it, think about it for a really, really long time, and then solve the plan, solve the people, and just go do it anyway. So <laughs> I always thought I was much more practical, not, not practical, pragmatic than I am, but actually, if it feels good, I go do it, you know, I, it takes a while to get to that point, you know, it will, it will feel good, I'm like, no, 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 that's a silly idea, that's a silly idea, and I'll end up doing it, it always ends up, you know, happening at some point, I've said I wanted to live in a tent when I was a kid, I lived in a tent when I was 31, you know, it's, it's taken, <laughs> you know, however many years, I said I wanted to live in New Zealand when I was 16, I moved to New Zealand when I was 27, you know, so things always, they always come out. It just takes me a period of time to turn off the, the voice in my head that says, this is a really silly idea, and turn on the one in my heart that's going, what the hell are you waiting for? So, you know, they have an argument that I have no control over. You know, my body is just the vessel for them to have a thing in, uh, to have a fight in. And then, yeah, and then I'm fine. I find... Sometimes without realising it, that I'm on a plane, on the way to wherever it may be, and there you go, and it's, and it's marvellous. I, I would love to inject playfulness into the world. I would, love, I would love to leave a legacy of it's okay to, to play, and for there not to be rules, and it's okay to make it up as you go along. I'd, I'd like to leave the world a really nice toilet, you know, but that's random. <laughs> one toilet's probably not going to resolve our situations, to be fair, but, you know, that would be kind of fun. A whole new rel a whole new understanding of what it means to use the toilet, and what does a toilet really mean, what does it stand for, you know. 
a whole new way to talk about shit. That would be great. Oh my gosh, that's what I want to do. You know, I want I want them to have some fun. I want them to play, and I want them to be able to talk about shit. That's why I, I really like toilets. I'm collecting people's stories about toilets. One of the things that people often say about me is that I'm I'm really smiley and happy and kind of like you know they're like you've got so much energy all the time. I think what I'd really love for somebody to understand is that I do have a lot of energy, but I actually have also big periods where I have no energy, you know, and I find it, I find it quite tiring, you know, and I do get really depressed by things, and I'd like for people to experience that sometimes, because when I'm around people, it's like, <gasps> you know, the world is, and it, because I, I really vibe off of other people, it's great, but when I'm on my own or if I'm just overthinking something, it could be really hard. And it could be really down, and it could be really, oh, it could be a bit like, I don't really know what to do with this. But then somebody will come into the world, and I'm like, <laughs> immediately, it's like, <laughs> I think what I'd love them to experience then is the kind of the polar opposites of my personality. <laughs> you know? well, this is just who I am, and I, I'm really happy to be me most of the time. One of the other things that a good pair of shoes for me has to be able to do, they so they need to be able to start the journey with me now. Um, they need to be comfortable, whatever it is. But one of the key things that they have to do is be good to dance in. They need to. I need to be able to spin around on the spot and twiddle and you know and 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 feel really good. And then when I come home at the end of the night, my feet aren't exhausted. So it's a pair of shoes that don't weigh me down, but give me the lift to to keep dancing and to keep being springy. Yeah. They've done all of that. Yeah. Tanzania is kind of very much the next step. I think it's it's about understanding who I am. You know, like the journey is is a, a journey of like go and see the world, go and understand what it, what it looks like. You know, go and find the things that make you happy. Go and find the things that you know. <laughs> put the stupid grin on your face. <laughs> um, there is no there is no goal. I don't think I have. You know, I, I, I've set myself such strict goals in the past and I've always been disappointed because I've never achieved them. Or I have achieved them and it's not quite what I wanted them to be. So I'm, I'm, the journey now is to, to say yes to what happens and to be up for what happens. Don't see the issues, but see the opportunities that come out of that. Like, stuff's going to happen, but you know, it's amazing. So I've quit my job. Awesome. So I come back in December. I'm, I'm not going to have a job. What's that going to look like? Well, it could be awful, but it's going to be amazing. And I know that. I really believe that.